Hello, I'm Victoria and today I will show you how to upload a website to the internet. Let's go! In this video, you will learn how to upload a website that's stored on your computer to the internet, making it accessible to everyone. But before we get to the tutorial, we need to have the website files ready. So instead of uploading them one by one, let's compress them into one neat file. To do that, select all your website files, right click and select compress. Now that we have a .zip file with all website files, we can move on to uploading them. To publish your website, first you have to get web hosting. Let's open Hostinger's website and choose a hosting plan. I'll choose the premium shared hosting plan, which comes with all the tools and resources you will need to build a high performing website. Click the select button. After that, select the subscription period, I'll choose the 12 month one. Then create your Hostinger account and pick a payment method. This hosting plan includes a free domain name, which we will claim shortly after this. Next, apply the coupon code HE10 to get a 10% discount on your hosting plan. Finish the checkout, then log in to your hosting account. Great! Now it's time to claim your free domain name. Let's go to the HPanel dashboard and select Claim Domain. I recommend picking a short and simple name, so that people won't misspell it and it will be easy to remember. Enter your desired domain name and expand the drop-down menu to select an extension. The most popular and recognizable domain extension is .com, so I highly recommend you to choose that and then click Check Availability. If the domain name is still available, proceed by clicking the Claim Domain button. But if it's not, you can search for alternatives using our domain checker. Now click Add New Profile. Provide your personal information and whether your site is for personal or business purposes. Next, enter your contact details and click Finish Registration. A message will appear saying that your contact information is now under review, but you can start building your website while waiting for that process to be completed. Then click Continue. You will be directed to the Domain Overview page which shows your domain status. To complete the registration, verify your email address. Alright, I have verified my email address and my domain's already active, so let's set up our website. Navigate to the hosting menu and click the Setup button. Next, click Start now. Since I have the website files ready, I'll choose Migrate my website. Then select Upload website and click Choose a file. Note that it accepts .zip, .tar and .gz files up to 256 MB. So if your site file size is larger than that, you can use other uploading methods that I'll show later in the video. Once it's completed, a success message will appear and you will be taken to a new window. Expand the drop down menu and choose the domain name you just registered. Click select. On the next screen, you can choose the server location. The best practice is to pick the location closest to you to reduce the server's response time and boost the site's performance. Ok, so now we can click Finish Setup. While the uploading process takes place, you will see a message informing you about the automatic SSL installation. Having an SSL certificate helps to protect customers' data and also improves the site's credibility, so it's a great addition to any website. That's it, our website is ready now. As you can see, uploading a website to the internet is very easy when you use Hostinger. But there are other upload methods and I'm going to show them as well. The first option is uploading the files via a file manager, which is a tool that handles your website files and directories. To do that, you will need to log in to your hosting control panel and access its file manager. Open the public HTML directory. This is where we will upload our website files. There might be some sample files in this directory, so let's get rid of them first. We need to select all the files and click delete. Good, now we can upload the website files. Click the upload icon and choose file. Select your website file, mine is this zip one, and click open. The processing icon here shows us that uploading is in progress. Once the process is completed, the file will be listed in the directory. 
Now right click on the file you just uploaded and extract it by selecting an archive. Set the destination as the public HTML folder. You can see the current location here. Fill the choose folder name field with a dot as we want to extract the compressed file right in this folder. Click on archive. The file manager also has an upload limit of 256 megabytes. If your website file is larger than that, try one of the next uploading methods. Most web hosting providers support the File Transfer Protocol or FTP, enabling you to connect to an FTP client and upload your website files to the internet. The main benefit of this method is there no upload size limit. It does require some technical knowledge, but don't worry, I'll show you how to do it. First, you will need to connect your site to an FTP client. I'm going to use FileZilla for this tutorial. Once it is installed, we'll connect to our hosting account. So let's get back to the hosting account control panel to get the FTP details. If you use Hostinger, go to H panel and then on the files menu choose FTP accounts. There you will see your FTP hostname, username and port. If you don't know your FTP password, reset it by clicking change account password. Next, we need to add our site to the FileZilla Site Manager. Back on FileZilla, open the File menu and select Site Manager. Once the Site Manager window pops up, click the New Site button and fill in the fields on the General tab. The Protocol field identifies how we will exchange files over any network. Select FTP File Transfer Protocol. For a host, enter your domain name.com. Default port is 21, but this field is not mandatory at this stage, so it's okay to skip it. Now moving on to encryption. Most providers recommend selecting only use plain FTP because the other options require certificates and additional configuration. But if you use Hostinger, you can choose the more secure option, which is use explicit FTP over TLS if available. After that, log on type. It specifies how you will connect to the site via the FTP client. Let's choose normal. Then fill in the user and password fields with the FTP username and password from your controls panels FTP page. Okay, so now that we have filled in all the required information, let's click connect. Since we set the encryption as use explicit FTP over TLS if available, you will see this TLS certificate inspection screen. You can tick the always trust certificate in the future sessions checkbox, so that you don't have to perform this action each time you connect to FileZilla. Then click OK to proceed. You will see that the FTP client is connecting to your site. When it's successfully connected, it will show the directory listing of your FTP server. The panel on the left shows your local site, and on the right is your remote site, also known as live site. Awesome, now that we set up the FTP client, we can upload the site files. In the remote site panel, open the public HTML folder. Then head to your local site panel and locate your website files. This time we need the unzipped ones because FileZilla doesn't have an extraction feature. So select the files, right click, choose upload and these files will be uploaded to the public HTML directory. It will display a completion message once the files are successfully transferred to your remote site. If you use WordPress as your content management system, this method is for you. One of the easiest ways to upload your website to the internet is using a WordPress migration plugin. Generally, what you need to do is install, activate, then follow the plugin instructions. But most of the free WordPress migration plugins can only import files created by their own backup tool. For example, the free version of the all-in-one WP migration plugin only supports .wpres files, which is the backup file created by the plugin itself. To upload different file formats, you will need to purchase the plugin's premium version. Depending on your hosting provider, there might also be an upload size limit, but no need to worry as there are some ways to increase upload file size. Now you know how to upload the website to the internet using different methods. 
But before you can sit back, relax and let the world enjoy your work, there are two tasks you need to do. First, you have to ensure that your files are located in the main root directory of your domain. That means they should be in the public HTML folder. It's important to check it because in some cases, the tool you used may have created an additional directory when you uploaded the website files. If that happens, your visitors will be directed to the a subdirectory instead of your main domain. Simply use the file manager to move your website files to the root directory. Right-click on the subfolder, click the Move icon and set the public HTML as destination. And if your website has a database, you should also import it along with your website files. If you don't have a database, you can skip this part. From your control panel, navigate to the Databases menu. Create a new MySQL database and username, provide a password and click Create. Next. Open phpMyAdmin to access your newly created database. Go to Import tab and upload the backup file of your database there. After that, open your site's configuration file. This may vary from one CMS to another. For example, WordPress configuration file is wp-config.php and in Joomla, it's configuration.php. I've linked an article in the description to help you find your configuration file, no matter what your CMS is. Once you find the configuration file, update the connection details to reflect the new database. You should change the database name, host and username. And now here comes the final step, making sure that our site works. If your domain name is already pointing to your web host, just type it in the browser's address bar and see it if it takes you to your website. If you just pointed your domain to the web host's name server, you might need to wait for a while as DNS changes can take up to 24 hours to fully propagate. Check the status of your DNS propagation using an online checker tool like whatsmydns.net. Simply enter your domain name and it will check the DNS record information against multiple name servers worldwide. There you have it! 5 ways to upload a website to the internet. If you have further questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below. And if you want to learn more about building and growing a successful website, subscribe to Hostinger Academy. Good luck and see you in the next video!